Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Today we're going to learn about the new Epiphone Les Paul Special. In case you missed my other episodes, in 2020, Epiphone revamped their lineup with a new headstock, and they mirrored Gibson's lineup from 2019 with an original and modern collection. So this one is part of the original group of Les Pauls. So that consists of the Les Paul Jr., Special, 50s and 60s standards, which you can check a review out here, and a Les Paul Custom. So those guys are ranging anywhere from $379 all the way up to $679. And I've got to say, I think subjectively looking at this, I think the special is the best bang for your buck. Because look at it, you still get two pickups, so multiple tonal opportunities. Sure, you don't get the bridge and tailpiece set up, but you do get the sweet wraparound bridge. And if you're real picky with intonation, they do make intonatable wrap tails that you could upgrade this with. And if you really wanted to, you could wrap one of these things out for humbuckers if that's what you want. And it would still be cheaper than a 5060s Les Paul. And with these guys being at $399, that makes them a quarter of the cost of the Gibson variant, which is $1599, believe it or not. And certainly much cheaper than the vintage version of these that first started in 1955. Those guys will range anywhere between 5 to 10k plus, depending on condition and originality. So let's go ahead and dive into my first impressions of this guitar. Taking it out, I was a little bit disappointed at first at the TV yellow finish. Because TV yellow is hard to get right, but then when I caught it in the light just right, then I was like, okay, they did in fact do TV yellow. So TV yellow was initially called limed mahogany when it was first introduced. And it was called that because of the color of TVs as well as when they were on TV, if you had an all white guitar, it would kind of blur out in a black and white setting. So they kind of made it this limed mahogany color so it wouldn't do that effect anymore. But the biggest thing for me to consider something a TV finish is I want to be able to see the wood grain underneath. Now I'm probably going to have to play with the uh, saturation and lighting on this for you guys to be able to see it. But if you look really closely, uh, I mean there's not much to look at but you can see through to the mahogany wood grain here. But it's definitely nowhere near as nice as like the custom shop examples of these guitars. So once I was okay with the finish, the next thing I noticed just picking it up, this is a beefy guitar. Most like Les Paul Special Tribute guitars, they're really lightweight, they don't feel like much, but this feels very substantial. And on top of that, not only is the weight pretty chunky, but the neck profile on this guy is huge. As far as Epiphones go, I mean it's not quite R7 baseball bat neck, but it's definitely super rounded. So I'll definitely be interested to get those dimensions on the workbench because I think people are really going to like this if you like the chunky necks. It still has that like Epiphone D shape thing going on, but it's not quite as extreme on this shoulders. And two P90 pickups, these seem to be my favorite guitars out of the Epiphone collection. Because the humbuckers, yeah, they're okay, but I think the Epiphone P90s are just a little bit better. I've got to say, they nailed the look. You've got the knobs, you've got the pick guard, the dual P90s, the wrap tail piece. Now, it's not quite as angled as an original one, so I guess that's something you could knock it for on the look. But everything else, I mean, it even has binding on the neck at this price point. So far, I'm really impressed and looking forward to doing this full review and demo. So let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench, tear it apart, and take a look at its individual parts and specs before the playing demo. All right, inside the Epiphone Les Paul Special, nothing too much to go over here. Again, we just have two P90 pickups. What they're calling these this time are the P90 Pros, which I believe is the exact same thing that we saw in the SG Classic Faded, which I really like that guitar, so I'm really having high hopes for this one. But here you can see what the backside of these guys look like. Pretty much the only difference is the neck designation and the bridge designation. But inside the cavities themselves, I was actually surprised. Usually you either get springs or a foam block, but this one actually utilizes both. So your mounting screws go through here and they use a spring to help set the height adjustment. But then you also have this block in there. So those are actually gonna be pretty stable. If anything, the foam actually makes those springs easier to install because it just kind of keeps them in place. So maybe that's why they do it. It's a cost savings time feature. But I was curious if this would actually have a long neck tenon or not, and it doesn't. It's just a short neck tenon, which is what I was expecting. And it looks like we have like an M or a W, depending on which way you're looking at it. And as we normally see on these guys, underneath here we can actually see that QR code and the serial number matches what's on the headstocks. But here's a nice sight to see. You can actually see the mahogany body, or whatever type of mahogany that it actually is. It looks a little bit rough right there. But as far as the cavity routes themselves go, they actually look pretty nice. 
And I appreciate the fact that the P90s use a vintage style braided wiring system. But before we go any further, let's grab our pickup measurements. So you're about four in the middle, your bridge pickup, that's pretty hot for a P90, almost eight. Is that gonna be the same? Yeah, so they're fairly matched P90s here. Nowhere near as hot as the uh, P90 pickups that the Monkey SG had. <laughs> Here's what the bridge looks like though. It has the lightning bar that kind of helps you with intonation and you adjust the intonation by moving the bridge back and forth by using these little screws right here. So getting perfect intonation on these, uh, it's a little bit harder than a regular tailpiece and bridge setup, but you can still usually get them pretty close enough. So we'll just kind of run along the top. This is something that makes it different from a Gibson iteration. It kind of mounts at the top, whereas the Gibson version skirts down inside. It's not something you would really notice unless you're really fine tuned with all the details. That'll also help you locate fakes if you're buying like a Chinese knockoff Gibson. But I really like the choice of knobs that they used on here. The black top hats as they call them. It nicely contrasts with the yellow finish. It kind of reminds me of a bumblebee now that I'm looking at it. And without the pick guard, this is what it would look like. But I think the biggest thing that makes a special a special is the special pick guard. It just looks so cool with it. Well, here's what the backside of that looks like just for fun. Moving on from the slab mahogany body, we go to the neck. This is also a mahogany neck and you have an Indian laurel fretboard. And just like all the other Epiphones that we've reviewed that had this fretboard, the only thing I can really say is, you know, it looks okay after you treat it with a little bit of lemon oil. I definitely suggest cleaning your frets off, not because they weren't shiny from the factory. It's just, there's always a little bit of black residue that comes off of those guys. And the other thing is the strings. Just swap out the Epiphone strings that are stock. They don't feel good and they also turn your fingers black. But these guys have medium jumbo frets and there's 22 of them and you have the acrylic dot inlays with a 12 inch fingerboard radius. As far as the frets go on this one, they're fairly level. I mean, this one has a little bit of buzzing within that fourth to fifth range as these new Epiphones kind of just have. But this one's definitely acceptable just to play as is, I would say. The nut is a Graftec new bone. You don't technically have to lubricate them. I just do it because it's kind of a habit. As far as the nut width, it's 1.69 inches. And that gets pretty wide, 2.12. Let's see how chunky it is. First fret neck depth, 0.94. You know, it feels chunkier than that. I'm guessing probably around one up here. Yeah, 0.99. So a little bit chunkier than a regular 50s neck profile that we just documented on that R9 from Gibson. In fact, this is still that neck profile from that R9. So let's compare it. If that's not the perfect illustration of an Epiphone neck, I don't know what is. So this shows you those shoulders I'm always talking about and how Epiphones have these D-shaped necks that a lot of people don't like. This one, since it's so beefy, it's a little bit more comfortable than some of the slimmer necked ones like the SG with Vibrola that we reviewed. Finishing things off here, we just have the Les Paul Special, so it doesn't say Les Paul Model, and we've got the Epiphone Perloid inlay right there, and we've got the Ivoroid button tuners. It's just kind of a, a vintage spec thing. They're not quite as comfortable as Keystones in my opinion, but you can't have a TV special without those. And your truss rod is just right in there if you need to use it. And so far the only thing QC wise that I can really knock them on is whoever drilled the screws for the truss rod cover did them at an angle, which is a little bit annoying. Oh, and I guess one other thing is there's a few tooling marks on the binding right there. And you can see there's a little bit of a, a dirt build up along the edge. But, but you could clean that up with a razor blade if you wanted to. So very minor things on this one. I'm actually pretty happy with it. Just a quick comment on the setup. It wasn't actually intonated at all. So I just had to make a few adjustments here. And I mean, it's close enough, good enough for me anyways. Somebody that's really picky might want to do something better, but it did intonate with my snark tuner. Now we move on to the back. Pretty much the same thing as the front. It's all coated in the TV yellow finish. If you look really closely, you can see the mahogany wood grain, but it's definitely not ever apparent. But these things were supposed to ship with CTS pots. Let's see if that's true. By golly, it is 500K CTS. You can see that right there, and they did a pretty good job wiring this thing up. It's interesting how they take the braided shielding wiring and convert it over to a quick connect system at the end, though. I guess that just makes it easier if you want to swap a different pickup in, though. Oh man, what are they doing? What are they doing? TV yellow looks perfect right there. What did they put over top of this? There must be some, like, opaque layer that they put over it. Epiphone, please don't do that. Just leave it looking exactly like that. And then this would be almost perfect TV yellow in my opinion. I mean, it might be a little bit too bright of a yellow color, but then you would actually see all that mahogany wood grain. And let's see how many screw holes this one has. Good, they did it right, three of them. And once again, man, I wish they would have just left it like that. 
As far as the sides go, we have a plastic output jack plate and we have the regular style Epiphone strap buttons that have the cloth washers to secure the fit. The other one's right up here and it does have the correct special construction. These guys have a little bit of a ridge past the heel, though it doesn't seem quite as extreme on this Epiphone model. The finish on the neck you can actually see through to the wood grain a little bit easier than what they do on the body, so I think they just need to lighten up that last layer and then they'd be good to go. But crafted in China, all your other inspection stickers right here, and your serial number up here, so 19 meaning a 2019 model, 12 for December. And we've got Epiphone Deluxe Cluson style tuners. And finally, the weight, seven pounds, 8.1 ounces. That feels a lot heavier than seven and a half pounds. But all in all, I've gotta say, I'm impressed with the build quality of this. I mean, you could upgrade the pickups to something a little higher end. I mean, your pots are technically okay to use as is. So besides a few minor cosmetic things, I think we're pretty good to go here. So let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how it sounds. <laughs> Now that we know all about the TV Yellow Epiphone Les Paul Special, what are my final thoughts on this thing? As far as the tones go, I was impressed with it for the price point. I think you could definitely upgrade these pickups into something a little bit better, but stock in the guitar, I think you're going to be okay with it. And if you're not happy with your tones, check your pickup heights. I was not happy with the neck pickup, but once I raised it up, it got a little bit more clarity because it almost sounded like the tone was halfway off until I did that. And then I was really enjoying that. The bridge, it's got a lot of bite and spank. Don't necessarily like that on the clean channel, but once you add some overdrive, that's when that thing really shines. But it's all about the cleans for the neck here because it does get a little bit muddy when you add distortion to it. But I found, I really like the middle position. It's got a certain quirky chiminess to it that's just in between both of them. It's definitely something that I would probably land on quite a bit playing this one. I didn't really fall in love with this one while playing it, but it was definitely a very good guitar. It's not something that I would sell immediately. In fact, the more and more I play it, the more I ended up liking it. The only thing I want to briefly mention, if you're wondering, should you get the Gibson version or the Epiphone version, it's all in the feel. So not only will your neck profile be different, but the fret material, for whatever reason, the frets just feel weaker on these Epiphones. Like maybe it's because they're not as highly polished. You can definitely feel them scratch a little bit more. And a lot of these new Epiphones do need a slight leveling job. This one, again, it's not too bad. And that's the next thing I want to talk about, the price. I honestly think Epiphone is selling these things too cheap. $3.99 for this? It's a steal. They really need to raise the price to at least, at least $449, because I think people would still pay that for these and be happy with them. 
I think they could even stretch it as high as 500 because right now their whole pricing scheme doesn't make too much sense. The next closest thing that I've demoed was that Warren SG and that was $379. So for $20 more, you get a full gloss finish and the Les Paul shape. I mean, that just tells you right there that these should have at least have been $449. But I really wouldn't mind a worn version of this guitar because these Epiphone finishes, yeah, they get pretty thick and clunky on it. So when it's nice and thin like that, that's when I think this guitar would truly come to life. So I would definitely suggest checking one of these things out. I had a great time with it, and this could potentially make a great modding platform. Not that you have to do too much either. So I hope you troglodytes enjoyed getting to take an up-close look at this new Epiphone Les Paul special. The only thing left that we have to do is take a look under blacklight. Under blacklight here, not too much going on. You can see the edges of the pickguard glow, as do the dots. Your binding glows a little bit as well, but honestly, we're not going to find any breaks, cracks, or repairs on a brand new guitar, so this is mainly just for fun. So let's go ahead and check out the original shipping box before we say goodbye. So if you buy one of these at a store, ask them for the original box because you can kind of use it as a makeshift case. So it's kind of got this whole triangle vibe going on. But inside here, they have this little part that kind of secures it into place. There's a cheesecloth that goes over it so it doesn't get scratched up. And then you get some additional case candy as well. So since these things don't come with a gig bag or a case, you know, it's nice to have something. But you know, at $3.99, they really do give you enough room to purchase a hard shell case with one of these things. So these really are like some of the best bang for your bucks on the market. But that's assuming if you only want to buy a Les Paul shape and it has to be either from Gibson or Epiphone, the original creators that are licensed to make these bodies. Because let's be honest, 400 bucks can buy you a bunch of different makes and models from all kinds of manufacturers today. So if you might be interested in being the next owner of this particular one, this was actually purchased through my new Guitar Day program. So if you're interested in buying one through me, you can check out my new Guitar Day program on my website troglisguitarshow.com. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.